Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 22nd, coming up on 12.30 p.m. here. Today we're going to talk about what we can expect for the Pacific Northwest over the next few days as far as our fog, sunshine forecast, and this huge ridge of high pressure dominating our weather. We'll take a look at some of the other areas of the U.S. briefly and what's going on there. And then we're going to take a detailed look at the extended forecast. You probably heard some talk about possible cold air later in the period. And... Not only that, but it could be returning to a more active period as far as windfall and just uh, rain in general. But we'll, we'll look at that in some detail here. First of all, we're taking a look at the visible satellite imagery here. You can see the fog entrenched over the Willamette Valley and the Puget Sound portions of eastern Washington. And if you look out here, you'll notice this isn't moving around too much. You see the fog kind of shifting and burning off a bit. And you can see a lot of snow here in the western mountains. And if you zoom in here, you can see actually Mount Rainier right there. Some of the mountainous areas in the Cascades, fog, some high clouds going over the top there. But you can see if you get above this inversion, which gets trapped, the colder air at the surface here is the inversion. There's warmer air aloft there. So if you get out of this inversion up into the hills, the mountains, you're going to get some glorious sunshine today all the way down into Oregon, British Columbia. There would be some high clouds passing over at times, but a very nice day on the coast and in the mountains, as you can see here on the visible satellite imagery. So taking a look at what's going on around the country right now, you can see there's some winter weather advisories for some snowfall going across the Midwest there. Um, the Santa Ana winds are still blowing in Southern California, and we've, of course we've got our dense fog advisories and our air stagnation advisories here in the Pacific Northwest. There's a hard freeze uh, warning, I believe it is, down here on the Gulf Coast. Here We'll take a look at that, just some, some brief detail coming up here. And looking out at, towards Hawaii, they've got a high surf warning out there, some pretty big waves going by out there in the Hawaiian Islands, check this out, 35 to 50 feet along north facing shores of Nihau, Kauai, Oahu, Molokai, and Maui. So pretty good day for the surf, the surfers out there in Hawaii. And this is why, check out this, you know, these significant wave heights. You can really see them increase for the Hawaiian Islands there and then move on by and lessen by Sunday afternoon. So looking here, this is across the Midwest here. Chicago might be getting a couple, two to four inches of snowfall there. It is winter after all. And here, here we are again here. We've got that hard freeze warning all the way down to the Gulf Coast there. We've got a freeze warning for New Orleans proper, but you can see the areas surrounding a hard freeze warning. You've been talking about protecting your plumbing. You know, the homes in the south aren't built the same way they are in the north. It, this, the, you know, you don't want to build your home in the south to collect heat versus up north. So looking get uh, gusty wind Santa Ana through Saturday. They were getting some isolated gusts up over 70 miles per hour. And you can see the high wind warning still in effect there for most of Southern California. Wind advisory for Los Angeles proper. And some of the desert areas have wind advisories still currently. So the Santa Ana winds are still going on down there in Southern California. And here's a demonstration of that. You can see we've got offshore winds really all the way up through Washington, Oregon. You can see them pretty powerful off the Oregon, Northern California coast there. And you can see them stretching off of Southern California there too. Put this into motion. You can see the Santa Ana winds go all the way into Sunday morning. They're still going on. Then they start to relax a bit on into Sunday night. But you can see these offshore winds are going all the way into Sunday afternoon and they continue basically till Sunday night, very early Monday morning. But some nice conditions on the Washington, Oregon coast. If you get a chance to get out there, now is the time to do it. And now looking at visibility. This was this morning. We saw the satellite imagery highlighting this fog. Eastern Washington, Puget Sound, Willamette Valley, pretty good here. It was foggy when I woke up. Starting to break out a bit now. And you can see it should be all right this afternoon for a lot of areas. Still some residual fog around. So... Heads up for that. You can see eastern Washington. It starts socking back in tonight, most of eastern Washington. And you can see the Puget Sound really starts getting it into Sunday morning. Well, Willamette Valley a little bit less tomorrow. And, of course, we're going to repeat that into Monday morning. The winds are just are not that strong. We don't have any weather systems moving this air around to clean out our inversions. And again in Tuesday morning. So you kind of get the pattern on what's coming up here for next week. Let's check out Wednesday again and wait for this to load up here. Here's Thursday morning. It basically, you know, almost an entire week of this until the next system gets in here towards, as you can see, we break it up a bit there, the 28th into the 29th. So we'll see how that goes in the upcoming days here. 
And now let's take a look at this big ridge and see the evolution of it. This is not the full extended one we're going to look at with some of the ensemble control runs, but you can see this ridge. That's what's spawning our dense fog and our air stagnation through the Pacific Northwest here. And then you'll see this next system try to get in here, and that looks like it'll probably break up our our uh, air stagnation for the Pacific Northwest. You can see this is the 28th. Looks like some precip will make it in. And then you see the big ridge that we've been talking about for a couple weeks now. This finally starts developing here late January. But you can see on some of these runs, it's developing a little bit too far east. And this is going to pinch that cold air off and give it more of a trajectory that is just not favorable for a lot of Arctic air getting into our region. This can still produce snowfall in portions of the Pacific Northwest into the lowlands, but it's a much trickier forecast. But again, I think this is probably going to change to an extent, you know, that we're still talking about this being 10 days out. So there's plenty of time for this to change. And we're going to look at some extended forecasts coming up here too that show a little bit more favorable of a setup. Here's the GFS, there's the ridge. And you can see the system doesn't make as much headway on the GFS versus the European model. And it keeps us under a ridge of high pressure all the way into the end of January. Then you see our big ridge building up over Alaska, which could steer some Arctic air towards our region. And this is colder air aloft, but this is not a really, it's not a very favorable setup for Arctic air. But then when you swing this low back around, if that one would come down the coast, that could be more favorable. But you can see it kind of stretches it out over the Gulf of Alaska there too and gives us a more zonal flow, uh, perhaps a windstorm or maybe even an atmospheric river event into the Pacific Northwest. So we'll see how that develops. Looking at the Canadian here, Big Ridge, no debate about that for the next few days. It doesn't show that system getting in here. It doesn't show our next system really until the 30 for, uh, 30th or 31st there. And you can see the ridge extends out to the east, but then you can see it backs up a bit, and it allows some of this colder air from the north to get down. So the Canadian is a little more favorable for um, colder air getting down into the region here for early February. So not all is lost, and there are some – we'll look into the extended here in a minute – and there, uh, the European control has a little bit of hope at the end of it, too. But just going over the dense fog, again, air stagnation advisories. You can see it through the Puget Sound here. Pendleton, or sorry, Portland here. We'll look at Pendleton here in a minute. You can see it's all throughout the Willamette Valley and even some of the coastal range here. Other than that, there's not much going on. Besides the freezing fog into eastern Washington, there's still some chilly air over there. And, of course, the very poor visibility there in that dense fog. In the weekend outlook and then changes on into the extended so spokane's kind of highlighting at that and this is way out there though this is what we've been talking about so we'll look at that here in some detail coming up here in boise you know here's the eastern washington air stagnation advisory also so okay here we go way off into the extended here so we're going to show the ridge here this is the european ensemble control and you see that system coming in here breaks up our um, our dry streak here on the 28th and then that big ridge builds over the top of us here and then you'll see this lobe of polar air move down here and this could bring some arctic air out over us on a kind of a unique trajectory off from the east more of a dry intrusion but there is still a system down here which could ride moisture back over the top of that arctic air so not all is lost there is still a chance even in this scenario if this doesn't change we could still see snowfall riding back over any arctic air that does get into western washington western oregon etc and then going on into the extended there you can see maybe another lobe way off into fantasy land there as the ridge is still there and directing um, weather systems out of the north so there's you know we still have a, a chance for that coming up i just wanted to kind of let people know that there are caveats to this extended forecast there are ways this could go you know where we're not going to get arctic air into the lowlands of western washington and oregon and it could just be more of a warm a windstorm type pattern or like i said atmospheric river or you know so just a heads up there and here's the surface map of that same of, you know, we're looking at the North Pole here. Here's North America. Here's Washington, Oregon, British Columbia. And you can see this next system that comes in and brings 
gives us some precept and breaks up our dry streak here into the 28th and 29th. And you see some Arctic air with this high up here. And we still got systems riding up into there. That would be a pretty good snowmaker for areas up in British Columbia. And then this relaxes a bit. We've got some Arctic air here moving down. And we have this system out here off the Oregon, California coast. Depending on where that would set up, you could still get a, you know, you got a pressure gradient here. You could get some offshore flow with some moisture riding back over top of that. But again, we're way out there at this point. You know, this is 300 hours out. I'm just looking at possibilities at this point. This is a closer look at that same map. You can see the ridge dominating our weather as we go on into the 28th. And then finally brings it in here and breaks us up. But the European is different than the GFS and the Canadian on this. They don't show the system making as much headway towards Pacific Northwest. So they show an extended dry period all the way through the end of January. And you can see the European breaks that up much sooner. And then we have this stronger system blasting in here and running up into this Arctic high pressure here moves through underneath out into the plains and then we have another system develop here and this would be the one that would be a, kind of an interesting scenario we've got some colder air into British Columbia here and we've got a moist system down here over Oregon if we look at our upper air temperatures here too let's look at the 850 millibar anomaly and you can see we've got that cold air out here so depending on where that system would set up it could give us some snow potential so there is still potential with this and again this ridge could end up not developing as far east and stay a bit further west and drive systems from the north and allow even more arctic air than these runs are showing now on into the future so i'm watching each individual run i'll be reporting on this in tomorrow's outlook and check back on twitter for updates and yeah i hope you guys get out to enjoy the sunshine up in the mountains and on the coast this weekend very nice weather there if you can get out of the inversion of the willamette or, willamette or the puget sound valleys and eastern washington of course too where there's some freezing fog so Hope you guys are liking these videos. Keep leaving feedback. Make sure to click subscribe for me and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Thanks.